Hi, welcome to ThorLabs. My name is Bill, and today I'm going to talk about aligning your polarizer's transmission axis to 45 degrees. For today's demonstration, I have a collimated laser diode package, three linear polarizers and precision rotation mounts, a power sensor, and a power meter. Now when aligning your polarizer, it has to be at 45 degrees with respect to some reference. And that reference is typically your S&P polarization states. The S&P states are based upon the plane of incidence with each optic, and is created by the incoming beam and the front face of that optic. Now if you happen to be maintaining the same beam height throughout your optical system, so it's always at the same height with respect to your table, then your S&P polarization states are automatically aligned to your table. So to begin, I'll take my first linear polarizer and I'm going to align the transmission axis with respect to the table. So I'll take this first mount and I'm going to butt it up against this fork. And I'm going to bring my power sensor and put it relatively close behind. Now I'm going to note the power through the front face of the polarizer. And I'm going to flip the entire mount so that now I'm going through the back. And I'll rotate the course adjustment until the power is approximately halfway between the two power measurements. So I'll take note of the power, rotate again, and now I'll measure the power through the front face of the polarizer. And here again, I'll rotate the polarizer until the power is approximately halfway in between. Now, one thing to note is that I'm using this fork that has three point contacts in order to give myself a repeatable position of the base as I flip it back and forth. And once I'm close, I'm going to lock down the course adjustment. And I'll use the mic to make finer adjustments. Now one thing to note is that we did a previous video on how to align your polarizer's transmission axis to your table. So if you want any background or more details on the technique, feel free to check that out. And once I'm getting the same amount of power through both faces of my polarizer, then I know that the transmission axis is aligned to my table. So I'll lock that down. And 
and I'll bring my power sensor back. Now I'm going to take my second linear polarizer and I'm going to put it toward the back and I'm going to cross this polarizer with respect to the first. So I'll butt this power sensor up against the back and I'll rotate the polarizer until I start to see minimum power throughput. I'll lock down my course adjustment use the mic, tweak the alignment so I can get it as small as possible. And once I have minimum power throughput between the two cross polarizers, I know that I've lined one with respect to my table, and my second is now orthogonal, or at 90 degrees with respect to that first one. So now we want to align our last polarizer at 45 degrees. So I'll bring this polarizer into the path. And I'll lock that down. Now, if this polarizer's transmission axis is aligned to the input polarizer, then we'll still cross with the output polarizer and maintain that minimum power throughput. Or if this transmission axis happens to be parallel with our output polarizer, will still cross with the input polarizer and still maintain that same minimum power throughput. But as we rotate the polarizer in between those two angles, then we'll increase the power measured by this power sensor. So as I rotate the polarizer, see the power increase. and then decrease. And so I'm going to come back to the point where I have maximum power throughput. Lock down. And I'll know that I have my polarizer aligned to 45 degrees with respect to my two references when I have maximum power through the last polarizer. Now, you might be asking, how did we take an optical setup that had very little light at the output, add something to the path, and suddenly start measuring more power? And the thing to remember is that the transmission through a polarizer is dependent upon how much of the input linear polarization state is parallel to your polarizer's transmission axis. So if your input light happens to be polarized parallel to your polarizer's transmission axis, then you're going to get maximum power throughput. As you rotate that polarizer, the power through will be based upon the cosine squared of the angle between your input polarization state and your polarizer's transmission axis. Now it's the cosine squared because we're measuring power and we're not looking at the electric field alone. So in our example where we had an input linear polarization state created by our first polarizer that was at 90 degrees with respect to our last polarizer. The cosine squared of 90 degrees is zero. So we're going to have minimum power throughput. But then we took a linear polarizer and put it at 45 degrees in between those two cross polarizers. So our input polarizer created an initial polarization state that was at 45 degrees with respect to our second polarizer. The cosine squared of 45 degrees results in a 50% power drop. This polarizer then creates an input polarization state to our last polarizer that's also at 45 degrees. Here again, the cosine squared of 45 degrees results in a 50% power drop. So in the end, our power meter is going to measure approximately 25% of the power through that first linear polarizer. 
Hopefully this helps you out in your application someday. If you have any questions, feel free to contact TechSupport.